The ESMA Project presents the 2021 Torchbearers Legacy Awards, a virtual awards celebration. Hello, I am Dr. Rosa Sales, president of the ESMA Project, and I am so pleased that you have selected to join us today for today's celebration. I cannot tell you how excited it was to meet each of today's recipients in their homes, in their places of business, and to celebrate with them and their families and friends on the day of the actual award. Some of you have been with us on our monthly interview program, Shift, and we were honored to have you with us as we interviewed individuals who are on the front lines of fighting human trafficking, building awareness of infertility issues in the African-American community, fighting, the COVID, fighting against COVID, and authors of some wonderful books, and much more. And we plan to join you again with Shift next year. Last month, if you were with us, we celebrated our Sales Legacy Scholars, and today we're celebrating our awardees for the Torchbearer Award. To share with you the wonder and the beauty of what God has done in the lives of these unsung heroes is our plan and our excitement. So whether you're watching on Zoom or Facebook Live today, or if you tune in later and join us on YouTube after this event, we want you to celebrate these outstanding and magnificent gifts that God has given to the church body. Thank you so much for being with us. So now let's get started. Hello, I'm Leonard Cooper, a member of the Ezra Project Board of Directors. It is my distinct privilege to introduce the hosts of the 2021 Virtual Torchbearers Legacy Awards celebration. Pam Morris Walton and Frank Walton are two highly recognized personalities in the world of gospel radio. Pam, known as the Gospel Sister, has a long history with gospel music on WVON. Her reputation of promoting our church and community events, along with establishing the city's first gospel festival and other city events, has made her a li li living legend. Frank's reputation in radio and music was well established on the West Coast before he turned to his hometown of Chicago. Each week, this dynamic duo collaboratively brings the history and joy of gospel music, thousands of radio listeners. As a pastor, Frank is constantly helping his congregation to navigate the storms of life and the joys of their collective journey through his forthright gospel message. Pam has penned the testimony of her heart transplant in her book, 57 Days, The Wait for a New Heart Sparks a Spiritual Journey of Faith and Love. Together, Pam and Frank travel the city and the country to promote gospel music and to give honor to the people of God whose lives they have touched in this journey. Frank and Pam are stalwart supporters of the Ezra Project, and we are honored that they are hosting today's Virtual Torchbearers Legacy Awards celebration. So put your hands together and praise God as we welcome our hosts for today, Pam Morris Walton and Frank Walton a power couple indeed, delivering a gospel message to the, those who need. Thank you, thank you, Brother Cooper. It's so good to be here for such an incredible special event as this. Thank you so very much. Frank, it's good to be here. Yes, it is, and what a joy it is to celebrate on this very special day with the Ezra Project. Thank you so much, Dr. Rosa Sales. And now to Get us started and officially open today's ceremony. Let's receive now the chairperson of the Ezra Project Board, Reverend Alice Kennard. Praise the Lord and good morning. We, the board of the Ezra Project, would like to welcome all of you here to celebrate our honorees and participate in our 10th annual Torchbearer Awards celebration. We are excited to have all of you and thanks for choosing to spend this day with us. Again, we say thank you for your support. Thank you, Reverend Kennard. You know, the Torchbearer celebration lifts up church folk. So before we get started, let's join our hearts and minds for our scripture by Ezra Board Secretary Cynthia Mosley, followed by prayer led by Ezra Board member Carolyn Butler.
Thank you, Frank and Pam. As a community, we need to understand how our torchbearers remain focused, consistent in their work, and steadfast on their appointed journeys. Deciding on a scripture for today's ceremony, the first book of Psalms, chapter 18, verses 30 and 31 were suggested. In the 30th verse, the word buckler is written. Researching the word's definition as it is used in the context of the scripture, I found it means a shield or protector. The scripture reads, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his words. Our torchbearers put faith, their faith in God to be a buckler for them as they travel their journeys. We should do the same. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we do come to tell you thank you. We tell you thank you because you are God. We tell you thank you because this is a day that you have made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. But Lord, even more, we tell you thank you because you've given us an opportunity to begin to show how much we appreciate what all of our torchbearer award honorees have not only done for their churches, but for their communities. Lord, you told us when we have an opportunity to do good, that we ought to do it. So Lord, we tell you, thank you. Lord, as you've looked over their lives and as you've given them a heart and a mind, glory to God, to go beyond the four walls of the church and go out into the community to use their gifts that not only would they edify, be edified, but they would also edify others. So Lord, we tell you, thank you for them on today. We ask that you would continue to strengthen them. Continue to give them a heart and a mind to know, glory to God, that their gifts don't just belong to them, but the gifts are for them to share with others. So Lord, you have your way in this program. Glory to God. We set it up that you might get the glory, that you might get the honor, that you might get the praise. So Lord, have your way and we'll tell you thank you now. We'll give you glory We'll give you honor and we'll give you great praise in Jesus name. Amen. 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 It is traditional to open ceremonies in the African-American community with what is known as the Negro National Anthem. The artist you are about to hear presents an especially moving rendition here with Lift Every Voice and Sing is Miss Jada Holiday performing in Elliston Chapel at Baylor University in Waco, Texas. Every voice and sing. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jada. Thank you so very much. Frank and I have been hosting the Ezra Project's Torch, Torch Bearers Legacy Awards for several years, and we are just amazed at how this program has really grown. This is the 10th year of this celebration of the workers in God's vineyard. That's right. Those first torch bearers were all Christian educators. Dr. Rosa Sells thought that the first celebration would be the only one, but it was evident pretty fast that this celebration had a life of its own. You know, within these three years, the Ezra Project, the board has expanded to include Christian workers in other areas from the choir to the deacons and the ushers into the trustees. They honored even more families and workers by naming the awards after workers who have been influential in the lives of the board members. And as the awards went beyond the church walls, categories were developed for denominational, national, and global ministry and witness. All of today's recipients have each been faithful in ministry for over 35 years. There they are gifts to the church, and we are honored to be able today to salute them for their faithfulness and their hard work. Well, it's time for us to present the 2021 Torchbearer Awards to these outstanding individuals for the work they have done in their local churches and community. So, so let's, let's get, get started. started. These first eight Torchbearer Legacy Awards recognize the congregational and community work of recipients in Christian education, church leadership, and pastoral care. We begin with Christian education. The 2021 Jural R. Knuckles Christian Education Award is presented today to Mrs. Janice Ebo Richardson. St. John Church Baptist, Reverend Dr. James Dunn is the pastor. Janice is the second of five children born to Dorothy May and Ollie Carter. She and her siblings were raised in Sunday school at Greater St. John Church Baptist, known as St. John Church Baptist, and has worked in St. John since she was a child. She's been active in everything from the choirs to the mission department. 
She was even elected Women's Day chairperson and she volunteers with the senior ministry. Janice always knew she wanted to be a teacher. She had good role models for teachers and earned her degrees at Elmhurst College and Chicago State University. She had a great career, 35 years in education. She taught in private, parochial, and Chicago public schools, including York High School in the Cook County Jail. While Janice volunteers with the STARS after school tutoring program at the church, she brought her teaching skills to St. John long ago. She taught men, women, and children in Christian education. And when the need came for a new superintendent at the church, Janice stepped right in. Janice was on board when churches were, went virtual and she helped shepherd her teacher teams in new strategies to reach students. She encouraged Sunday school teachers to study even more diligently to keep God in the center of each virtual lesson and to help students more clearly apply the messages of scripture to their lives. When Janice married Richard Richardson, they raised a beautiful blended family of five children, always stressing the importance of Christian living, education, and hard work. Today, Janice and Richard have 12 grandchildren and five great-grandchildren. Janice Richardson credits God for all she has accomplished in her life. Janice Richardson, I've known you, as they say in the church, low these many years. All right. I've watched you in school. I've watched you in church. And I've seen the phenomenal work you've done as superintendent, not only before the pandemic, but during the pandemic, and making sure that everybody had what they needed, making sure that teachers who didn't even know what Zoom was were on Zoom, that classes were engaged. You are a teacher to your heart. And I have been in the Chicago Public Schools, in the jail facilities. I know how rough that is. And I know it takes a lot of prayer to touch even one soul. And you've done that and a lot more. I thank you for your family. I thank you for your service. And on behalf of the Ezra Project, I present you with the official Ezra <coughs> Medallion for your service. And um, your name is on the back, Janice Evo Richardson. We also have this certificate. You're receiving the Gerald Knuckles Award for Christian Education. And he was <coughs> my role model. He was my mentor. Right. And I am so proud to give you this award today. Thank so thank you. Much. Now we also have for you a little bag of goodies you can play with after we go and they all got your name on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. So can anybody take your stuff because your name's on anything. Yeah. And also this year for the first time, we said we wanted to do something to say that we just appreciate those who have sacrificed so much and done so much. And so I want to read you what this says. <clears throat> we want to thank you uh, for your service and we want you to accept these tokens of appreciation and this love gift as our attempt to thank you for being special to us and a blessing to the community in the schools, in the neighborhood, <coughs> and everywhere. And, 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 in, and in God's church. Yes. 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 Thank Amen. you. Amen. God Amen. Bless. Thank God bless you so much. Amen. Amen. My okay. And I would, I would like to say thank you. I, well, I'd like to say first of all, I'd like to thank God and I'd like to thank the members of the Ezra Project for seeing what you believe you see in me and for giving me this acknowledgement today. I'm, I'm happy for my friends and family that are here to share this celebration with me. And I just want to make a couple points. I want to first of all acknowledge and thank God for my mother who motivated me to have an interest in education and to value the education and she saw to it that I became an educated young woman and I thank God for my fourth grade teacher Miss Ross, my fifth grade teacher Jean Hurd and my high school physics teacher Mr. Raymond L. McCann's for encouraging me to attend college and to become a teacher. They saw something in me and I saw something in them. I thank God for Alma Bland and Inez Tolden, 
who got me encouraged to become a Sunday school teacher at St. John Church Baptist, and for Pastor Don, who thought that he saw a spiritual gift of administration, <laughs> and drew me in to become the administrator and superintendent of St. John Church Baptist Sunday School. It's all been good, and I guess I did something right. Amen. And I thank God, but I give God the glory, because of what he did, working out his plan for me in my life, for it to come to such a time as this. Thank God, all right? Thank you. The next set of awards are for church leadership and encompass many areas of ministry. For 2021, the Ezra Project is recognizing four outstanding individuals for their leadership. These persons have given 35 years or more to various areas of ministry in congregational and community settings. The first 2021 Urban Carter Award for Church Leadership goes to Dr. Alma Jones Bland, St. John Church Baptist, Reverend Dr. James Dunn Pastor. Dr. Alma Clementine Jones Bland was born in Florence, Alabama to Joe and Cornelia Dixon. Alma accepted Jesus Christ as her savior at 12 years old at Mount Moriah Primitive Baptist Church in Florence. Well, she sang in the choir and was active in the Baptist Young People's Union and eventually became a Sunday school teacher. But after high school, Alma moved to Chicago where she and her family worship at what is now St. John Church Baptist. Alma married Wallace Jones Sr. And the couple was blessed with four children and in 1984, she married Alden Bland, who is also deceased. While working nights at the United States Postal Service, Alma received an Associate of Arts at Wilson Junior College. She later completed a Bachelor of Arts and a Master of Arts at Roosevelt University and a PhD from Northwestern University. And her leadership skills were finally honed at the, as the principal of the Carver Primary School and Wheatley Child Parent Center in Odgell Gardens, where she supervised a four building com campus, oversaw the instructional program for more than 800 students and piloted outstanding programs for the school and community. She worked tirelessly on various community boards, including the Developing Communities Organization, where she worked with the soon to become President Barack Obama. Both educational and civic groups have honored her, but it is the 68 years of leadership in various capacities at St. John Church Baptist that makes her a torchbearer today. Alma Jones Bland has four grandchildren, four great grandchildren, and a passion for guiding others to find God understanding his word and discover their calling. Alma Jones Bland. Alma Jones, Dr. Alma Jones Bland, I have known you for a long time. Your reputation came to me before I really knew you. And when we started doing this, again, your reputation came to me again from your working out there. But when I read your biography, having known you from St. John, recent classes that we've done together in the Bible, it just made everything clear. So I thank you on behalf of the Ezra Project. I thank you for your work in the church. I thank you for your work in the community that's dear to my heart. I thank you for the innovations that you've given in starting programs, in helping single parents, in meeting on boards, and all the things that you've done. Too numerous to tell. As they, say, as they say with testimony, you cannot tell it all, so I will not tell it all. But I thank you. And on behalf of the Ezra Project, I would like to give you, first off, the official, this is the official Torchbearer Medallion, and your name is on the back, for being this year's um, Irvin Carter Leadership Award winner. We thank you for your leadership both in the church and in the community and in family, because I've watched you with that too. And the fact that there's nine million people standing here watching me <laughs> lets me know that it's family. But also, in addition, this certificate 
for your work and thank you for your work and your leadership. Thank you for your work and your leadership and all that you have done. And I also would like to give you this small token and I will read to you what it says. It says, and this is the first year we've done this and we're just so grateful to be able to, to, our, to you who are 2021 torchbearer. Please accept these small tokens because we also have a bag of little goodies for you. Please expect these small tokens of appreciation and this love gift as our attempt to thank you for being special to us and a blessing to the community. So Alma Jones Bland, we thank you. First of all, I'd like to say I am truly, truly humble and honored because it's absolutely amazing that somebody thinks that I'm worth it. Because my whole life has been service, yes. and my service has not been for anybody to give me accolade. In fact, it's embarrassing. <laughs> and everybody will tell you if they say they want to honor you. I said, nope. <laughs> but I am grateful. I thank you, Reverend Dunn, for coming to, to witness this, and all of my family and friends, my church members, because it is a blessing mm -hmm. that someone will see what you've done and say it. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart mm -hmm. and to say, Rosa, I love you. You know I love you. Mm -hmm. and, and you've been a part of my life for so long. I'm grateful. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs>so special, so remarkable. Our second recipient of the 2021 Irvin Carter Award for Church Leadership is Mother Luvina Martin. Born in Mobile, Alabama on February the 26, 1921, a member of Indiana Avenue Pentecostal Church, Bishop Horace E. Smith, interim pastor. Mother Martin was one of three children born to Melinda Ebby and Willie E. Grant. Educated in Alabama, Mother Martin moved to Chicago in 1941 and was employed with Campbell Soup Company, where she met the love of her life, the late deacon Gus Martin. They were united in holy matrimony on the 15th day of March in 1947. Mother Martin has been a faithful member of the Indiana Avenue Pentecostal Church of God, IPC, since 1945. She was baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost under the leadership of the church's founder, Elder Charles H. Ellis. She remained a stalwart member under the church's next two pastors, Elder Odie Aikens and Bishop Charles E. Davis. At IPC, Mother Martin served in several auxiliaries, including Sunday school, the missionaries, the culinary staff, and the IPC Official Wives Auxiliary. In her denomination, Mother Martin participated in quarterly meetings and traveled across the country to enjoy the annual Pentecostal Assemblies of the World Convention. And Mother Martin, always alert and always in her right mind at 100 years of age, Mother Martin engaged in lively conversations and laughter with those who visited her. She gave thanks to God and appreciation for the special people in her life, including her son and her two granddaughters. As Mother Martin explained, it is God that have girded me with strength and maketh my way perfect, from Psalms 1832. This year, Mother Lavinia Martin celebrated 100 years of grace and beauty. She went home to be with the Lord not long after she was recognized and celebrated as a torch bearer. Mother Martin, 
Mm. You know, for years we've been meeting at the council and yeah. talking, and you, your smile and everything about you just cheers me up every time I see you. Oh, so when we thought about who should we give an award for the blessing they've been to the people of God, and we said you. Uh, thank you. Amen. So, on behalf of the Ezra Project, I present you with this official medallion. Okay. That's the official medallion for uh, your award for the Urban Carter. And you remember Elder Urban, uh, Brother Urban and, and Elder Carter. Yeah. And that award is named after them. So this is for you. And your name is right here on the back. Oh. Okay. Hey. And this certificate, which also oh. gives you, okay. <laughs> So this certificate, which shows that you have won this award for the work that you've done for so many years, over the years with the saints in the city, in the, at the conventions, everything that you've done. Amen? Oh, okay. You. And we oh. have something special for you because you had a birthday. So Alice Kennard, our president, has your Ooh. chairman. Ooh. <laughs> you like that? She love that. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh, ooh, I, oh, <laughs> oh, cool, praise God. I'm glad. Oh. Amen. And oh. We, got, we got two more things for you. One, uh, Cynthia, if you can hand me that bag. Oh. So later on, well, you can right see. Let's yeah, so put them all see. in that bag. Yeah. Okay, we are over. Oh, we got some more stuff in the bag for you. We got other stuff in the bag. Okay. Okay, but we got one more thing for you. Because you are special, and so I'm going to read you what it says, okay? It says, it says, please accept these tokens of appreciation oh. and this love gift as our attempt to say thank you for being special to oh. us and a blessing to our community of faith. Oh. Amen. Amen. Dang. One for every year. What? One for every year. Oh, wow. Well, now, how much is that? That's $100. Ooh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's Amen. Oh, God, that's Amen. a blessing. Amen. 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 Okay. Put it all in that. Okay. Bottom, all right. You have anything you want to say to the saints? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I can say. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Amen. Yeah, put it down Amen. in my We're going to put it all in your bag? Yeah, put it. Yes, ma'am. We're going to put all this back oh, in your now, bag. Oh, look at that. Okay? You she like really that? Love that. Oh, man, I love that. <laughs> oh. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And oh, we love man. you. Thank Boom. You. <laughs> <laughs> that is so Amen. great. Thank oh, you. Man. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for all you do and all the saints' lives and the people's lives you've touched down through the years. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 It's so very, very special. <laughs> she said, put it down in my bag. <laughs> yes, indeed. Our third recipient of the 2021 Irwin Carter Award for Church Leadership is Reverend Cecile D.D. Osborne. Apostolic Faith Church, Bishop Horace E. Smith, M.D., Pastor. Dee Dee is the fifth of Mary and David Tharp's children. Educated in Chicago, Dee Dee had a cultural awakening when she received a scholarship to attend Alverna High School, a private all-girls school with an enrollment of 12 African-American students out of 271 girls. After high school, she moved to Los Angeles, where in 1984, she gave her life to Christ, became a certified prison ministry volunteer under the Prison Fellowship Ministry, and in 1992, began providing ministry in prisons across the United States. Dee Dee, a breast cancer overcomer who gives God glory. Dee Dee Osibor has undergone two surgeries 16 chemo treatments, and 33 radiation treatments. She is also a survivor of substance abuse and extols God's grace for more than 30 years of just being clean. That understanding has fueled her passion for helping others. See, 
D.D. Osibor is the founder and chief executive director of Sister, Sisters in Sobriety Transformed, Anointed and Healed, a not-for-profit established in 2006 to reach women who are struggling with drugs and alcohol. Sista addresses the immediate needs of women leaving treatment facilities and provides coping skills that will assist in the lifelong process of recovery. Reverend D.D. provides skillfully designed seminars to youth and adults in facilities and prisons across the area to help encourage and equip women to maximize their potential. An ordained minister at the Apostolic Faith Church, Reverend D.D. is the director of the church's open door prison ministry with teams in prison throughout the Illinois Department of Corrections. An entrepreneur, an avid traveler, and favorite aunt to so many. Reverend Dee Dee loves the word of God and has inspired her mission by knowing and saying, I am in prison and you visited me, Dr. Dee Dee. Dee Dee Asifor. Yes, ma'am. It is such a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. And to share with those who see this, the work that you've done. Mm. I've been so impressed by what you do. Your honesty, your transparency mm. lends so much to the work that you do in the community. Mm. Your project sister mm -hmm. um, deals with women who have had a struggle, but you don't, you never see struggle. No. You always see potential mm -hmm. and you always see what people will be. Yes. And so you look at people with the eye of the Lord and not looking at their past, no. but seeing where they are going. Mm -hmm. And that's been a blessing, both in your work at the church mm. and your work in the community. Amen. And so we thank you. Thank Ezra you. Project thanks you for the work that you've done. Thank you. And we'd like to present you with first this of the official medallion Ooh. of the Ezra Project. Thank you. And you'll notice that it has on the a back torch. that is presented to oh. you the Irvin Carter Award. And oh, you know, you knew brother, Irvin, brother yes. Irvin and, and Elder Irvin and Brother Carter. Yes. And so both of them, we named this award and honor them because they, they cover the plethora of work that can be done by church people. Mm, and mm. so we wanted to give you that. Thank and you And we also so wanted much. to give you this certificate also, which oh, we'll wow. hold here. Wow. So this certificate also to thank you and to highlight the award that we're giving you now. Thank you so okay. much. And lastly, we have two things for you. Mm -hmm. Number one, we have a goodie bag for you. Okay. Most of it is engraved, but not all of it is engraved. You'll open this later. This is your personal little goodie bag okay. of gifts we thought that you might like. All right. Okay, just a little something, something to play with. Okay. And then finally, I want to present you with this. Um, this is our thank you to you. And it says, uh, please accept these small tokens of appreciation and this love gift as our attempt to mm. say thank you for being special to us mm. and a blessing to the community. Thank you so much. And so much. we present this to you. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank I you. I am so honored, Doc. Thank you. Dr. Sills, this is an honor. Okay, I'll take these and okay. then you can just say whatever you want to into the camera. Oh, wow. Uh, this is truly an honor. I have attended uh, this event uh, a couple of times and I was just blessed and uh, just overwhelmed by the, uh, not only the people that attended, but the people that were being honored. So for me to be in that category and to be amongst these wonderful people, uh, I am truly, truly honored. So I thank God for you. I thank God for the honor and um, to God be the glory. Amen. 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 God, bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Okay. Amen. And thank you so much, Dr. D.D., Reverend D.D. Our final 2021 Irvin Carter Award for Church Leadership goes to Dr. Helen Vallier, Apostolic Church of God, Dr. Byron T. Brazier, Pastor. Helen and her three sisters were born to Helen and Willie Sewell. Helen's sisters are now deceased. Helen was born again at Indiana Avenue Pentecostal Church as a teen. Some years later, she joined the Apostolic Church of God, always cherishing her friendships and ties to Indiana Avenue. Helen enrolled in Kennedy King College in 1969. 
As a freshman, she had a vision from the Lord for a multifaceted educational drug abuse program. Her proposal was funded for $300,000 and later expanded to become the Human Resource Development Institute, HRDI, with 14 programs throughout Chicago. Over time, Helen enrolled in DuPaul University, obtained a MA in business and later a PhD in counseling and psychology from Clayton University. Helen is also an ordained minister at the Apostolic Church of God, where she organized a program known as CALM, C-A-L-M, the Christian Action Lay Ministry to help drug addicted individuals. Two years later, Helen uh, added the Power Step Ministry, which has delivered thousands from drug addictions. Dr. Vallier has held a managerial position with the Illinois State Scholarship Commission's Office of Information. Been a clinical therapist for the Community Mental Health Council for Abused Adolescents, organized the Crisis Triage Department in Jackson Park Hospital Emergency Room, and has been a chaplain for hospice programs. Her work with persons with HIV AIDS has led her to instruct the African-American community and clergy about this disease. After a short semi-retirement, Dr. Vallier became a consultant to HRDI, Chicago Girls Residential Treatment Facility, and today works part-time as the Director of Training at the New Age Services Corporation on Chicago's West Side. Oh my goodness. Uh, Helen is the wife of Reverend Joseph Valier III and mother of 10 children and grandmother to 13 grandchildren. She gives thanks to God for making her more than an overcoming conqueror. Dr. Helen Valier. Yes, ma'am. I've known you for a long time and always been amazed at the work that you do. So much of it is uh, for the people of God, for the community, but as you know, many people don't really know what you do outside. Right. But as you've created HRDI, as you've worked with homeless people, as you've worked with people who are struggling with addictions and problems, as you've been a counselor, as you've been a referral agency mm -hmm. all by yourself for people who uh, needed help, you have strengthened the church, you have strengthened the body of Christ, you have helped the people of God, and you have helped those who live in our community. So on behalf of the Ezra Project, we are pleased to present you with this award, the official Ezra Torchbearer's Medallion with your name on it. Oh my goodness. Okay, the, Irvin, the 2021 Irvin Carter Award for Church Leadership presented to Dr. Helen Vallier. Oh my goodness, so that we, is beautiful. Is and we would also like to give you this certificate, which also verifies that you have been the recipient of this year's Irvin Carter Award. That's beautiful. And we have, a, we have a bag of goodies with your name on it and everything, uh -huh. so we'll give you that bag as well. It's over there. But also, for the first time this year, we're doing something a little different. And so I want to read you what it says. It says, please accept these small tokens of appreciation and this love gift as our attempt to say thank you for being special to us and a blessing to the community of faith. And so we present this to you, Dr. Helen Vallier. Oh, my for goodness. Your work. Amen. Amen. So thank you. That's thank you beautiful. for all that you have done. This is God beautiful. Bless God bless you. Oh, my. Hold a certificate oh, up. Oh, this is beautiful. Amen. This is beautiful. Amen. Thank you for this award. Dr. Sales, thank you and the Ezra Pro Project for giving me this award. Uh, I have received a lot of awards, but this is really special to me thank you. because it has a spiritual connotation to it. I've gotten awards here and here and there, but this is really special to me. And I'm going to uh, blast it. Okay. <laughs> That yes. you have honored me. I, I I really thank God for you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and that's beautiful. Yes, it is, Dr. Helen. And the next award is the Ella Mae Davis Award for Pastoral Care. It recognizes those who have served in the role of pastor 
and given 35 years or more of their ministry to the congregational care. This year, we are so proud to present two pastors with the Ella Mae Davis Award. The first award is? Pastor John Caples, pastor of Jesus Name Apostolic Assembly, Waukegan, Illinois. When he was eight years old, the Caples family escaped in the middle of the night from a sharecropper's farm in Sunflower, Mississippi. John learned early to fight for what he wanted and what he believes in. In high school, he excelled in football and basketball. After graduation, he attended the University of Wisconsin. And during a school break, he met his future wife, Celeste, and left college. And after eight years of employment at Abbott Labs, Pastor John tried out for the Chicago Bears. During the present, the process, he came to know God and accepted God's call on his life. In his home church, Jesus Name Apostolic Church, he worked in the children's ministry, served as pastor, and preached and evangelized on weekends, all while working a full-time job. Pastor Cables and his wife Celeste settled in Pontiac, Michigan, where he assisted the pastor of the Apostolic Church of Pontiac until he returned to Illinois to be the senior pastor at his home church, deciding to honor his parents by helping students succeed. John formed the Gift of Knowledge Scholarship Program, which provides $20,000 annually in scholarships to college students. He later opened a free fitness center next door to the church. It is part of the John I. Caples Community Development Center, which houses multiple nonprofit agencies and provides scholarships, summer camps, counseling programs, and ministry to the congregation and community at large. The church works with local politicians to provide equity in government and help to homeless individuals. Pastor Caples is also committed to mentoring pastors and missionaries across denominations. Pastor John and Celeste Caples have one daughter, one grandson, and a niece for whom they have served as guardians. That we present him with the Dr. Ella Mae Davis Ezra Project Torchbearer Award to none other than Pastor John Caples. Put your hands together. I've been instructed, you may be seated, that this acceptance speech is supposed to be 30 seconds. I told them they can't get 30 seconds out of me and Carolyn Butler, so uh, good luck to the uh, team back there editing it and making it what it needs to be. But I do want to thank Dr. Rosa Sales and the committee, including uh, Dr. Carolyn Butler, who obviously she thinks a lot of us and nominated us to, to do this. But I want to thank this congregation for the trust that you have placed in me because God has put me over you. And over is not a good word in our community. People don't like to have anybody over them. But the Bible said, feed the flock of God that the Holy Ghost. Has made you the overseer of. He said that we should not do it for money and we should not do it by constraint. Don't make folk do it. We should not do it uh, for filthy lucre. We should not do it just for the, uh, the, uh, the plaque and, 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 and to be rewarded. He said, but we do it because the love of God that he's put in us. And some of y'all need to admit something. You are lovable now. But when you got saved, you were not easy to love. Amen. You wouldn't, if, if you were easy to love, God wouldn't have gave you to me. He gave me some folk that had been hurt, had been bruised, had been abused, and they was not ready to trust anybody. But the Holy Ghost in me won you over to the point 
that you come out on a Wednesday night because you trust the God in me. And I want to thank you for that. God bless you and God keep you. Let's have some church. Amen. Amen. Our second 2021 LMA Davis Award for pastoral care goes to Suffolkin Bishop Eddie Richards, pastor of Hazelcrest Assembly Church, Hazelcrest, Illinois. Eddie Richards Jr. was born and educated in Memphis, Tennessee. In high school, he excelled on the school's varsity football team, playing running back and defensive cornerback positions. As a result, he received a full ride scholarship to Southern Illinois University, SIU, in Carbondale, Illinois, and was an education major. At SIU, Eddie was a star member of the football team. He won the coveted and quarter cornerback spot and was known to fans and opponent as the Juice. In 1971, Eddie Richards became a United States Army military police officer. He later became a Chicago National Guardsman. Always reminded by his mother-in-law that he and his wife, Margie, needed salvation. Eddie attended a worship service under protest with his wife in January 1977. And before the service ended, Eddie followed Margie down the aisle to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He later received the Holy Ghost on an elevator at the Merchandise Mart. The couple joined the Morgan Park Assembly Church where Eddie and Margie served as Sunday school teachers. He also worked in the junior church under the late district elder Robert A. Baggett. When Eddie Richards was called to the office of pastor, he founded the Hazel Crest Assembly Church. Ordained in April 1991, Elder Richards went on to become a district elder in 1993, overseeing nine churches. In 2007, he was ordained as a suffrage bishop, and for 33 years, Eddie Richards has pastored the Hazel Crest Assembly Church, which he founded in September 1987. Wow. Suffolk and Bishop Eddie Richards holds a BS in education and an MA in public administration. Eddie and Marjorie Richards entered their marriage with five children from previous marriages and had one son together. Prior to her passing in July of 2019, the couple have been bliss, blissfully married for 43 years. That's nice. Bishop Richards. Bishop. We've known each other for low these many years. Back when uh, I was Rose and you were Eddie. Right. <laughs> and we were young and didn't nobody have gray hair. <laughs> I know him, right? I thank God for you. I thank God for all that I've seen in your life, for how God has used you and how he used Margie and your family down through the years. How God came through the family and caught us all in the revival of his spirit. And I thank you. I thank you for now being in the ministry with you and under understanding the work that you've done in building this church and the blessing you've been to so many, so many who have come through here, who are still here, who have been here, been saved, moved on, done other things. I thank you for that. And on behalf of the Ezra Project, our goal is to always recognize those people who we see as the unsung heroes. It may be that you know, you've come a long way and so now you have a title and you're a pastor and you all that. But I know that no way can we or anybody else outside of the Lord really give you the, the, the accolades that you deserve for your work in the kingdom until he says well done. And we know that with your recent illness, he has left you here to say, keep going, you got more to do. So on this junction between what was done and what you will do, yes. the Ezra Project is proud to present you with this award. It is, this is the official medallion of the Torchbearers uh, Project. And it has your name on the back for the LMA Davis Award for Pastoral Care. We're presenting this to you, Bishop Suffolk and Bishop Eddie Richards. 
So we give you the medallion and we give you this certificate as well to say thank you for all that you have done and all that you continue to do for God's people. And because we love you and because we have we have a member of our board who just loves buying wonderful things for people. We have for you here a bag full of little goodies you can play with right. when this is over. Okay, so you can, ain't nothing in here about golf though. We did we, oh. we missed that part. But we thank you for your service. And one more thing which we started this year, because we cannot do enough to bless you. We cannot pay you. We cannot do any of that. But on behalf of the torchbearers, please accept these small tokens of appreciation and this love gift as our attempt to thank you for being special to us and for being a blessing to the community. And so we thank you, Pastor Richards, for your blessing and your grace and your mercy and God's hand upon you as you have ministered to the people of God. Thank God you so much. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. I certainly want to just thank all of those that have worked with you and are working with you uh, in the Ezra Project. And uh, I don't know, I don't know why, why you all picked me, but I'm just thankful and I'm grateful unto God for everything that he's doing in my life, especially now in this period of time. He uh, spared my life three times. So I'm just thankful unto God for what he has done and what he's doing. And uh, y'all just continue to pray for me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We surely will. We surely will. Amen. That's a fantastic presentation. And wow, you know, Pam, the Ezra Project does more than just recognize the hard work that has been done in the past. They also acknowledge the work that is being done now and the impact it will have on building faith and hope in the future. In addition to the Torchbearer Legacy Awards, we celebrate today the Ezra Project also recognizes the contributions of two other groups of faithful worshipers. Youth who have been faithful in working in the vineyard of their churches and communities. These young people have graduated from high school, entered their first year of college or trade school, and adults in seminary who are seeking deeper preparation to share the gospel message. Well, here to share with you about the 2021 Ezra Project Legacy Scholars and how you can be involved is a scholar committee chair, Mrs. Jacqueline Griffin. Hello, my name is Jackie Griffin and I'm the director of the Sales Legacy Scholars Program. This program was started by the Ezra Project in 2016. And each year recipients are selected from applications of African-American high school and seminary students who have demonstrated their commitment to their churches and communities. To date, the Ezra Project has recognized 17 scholars and provided over $20,000 in awards. The Sales Legacy Scholars Program is made up of two platforms. The first being the Michael Sales Legacy Scholar Program that honors high school students. This year, 2021, we honored two students. The first being Damonte Blanton, a 2021 graduate of Hammond Baptist High School in Cherville, Indiana. He's a freshman at St. Xavier University in Chicago, where he's majoring in biology. Damonte plans to go to a medical school to fulfill his dream of being a radiologist. He's a member of New Eden Baptist Church and has a passion for winning souls to Christ. Our second recipient, is Josiah Johnson. Josiah is a graduate of Rich Township High School. He's a member of Power and Praise Crusade Ministries in Mishawaka, Indiana, where he is heavily involved. He's a freshman at St. David University as well, with a major in physical therapy, a minor in business administration, and a spot on the football team. The next platform is the Rosa Sales Legacy scholars honoring seminary postgraduate students. This year, 2021, we were able to honor 
three seminary students. The first is Reverend Yvette Cherie Mayo. She's a full-time student working on a PhD in educational studies at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. She's a member of the South Suburban Vineyard Church, actively working with youth and women's ministries. Her desire is to transform multi-ethnic environments and communication in ways that affect change in the church and academia. Our second 2021 seminary recipient is Nyambi Romain. Nyambi is enrolled at Moody Bible Institute working on a Master of Arts in Ministry. She's the initiator of a mentor-mentee alliance group for young Black girls called BAM, B-A-M, Butterfly Effect Movement. Nyambi is a praise leader and takes a lead role with her church's ministry with young adults called the Revolution Team. And finally, our third 2021 Rosa Sales Legacy Scholar Awardee, <clears throat> excuse me, for seminary studies is Reverend Christopher Shepherd. Reverend Shepherd is pursuing his Master of Divinity at the Reformed Theological Seminary in Atlanta, Georgia. He will also gain a certificate of Bible and ethnicity from the Edmiston Center. He's a native Chicagoan that knows that the Lord is calling him to pastor in the African-American community and willing to go wherever the Lord sends him. This year, the Ezra Project inaugurated the Sankofa Memorial Awards to honor African-Americans who have been mentors and role models in our lives, our communities, and our churches. Each award designated as a Sankofa Memorial is donated by a family, organization, or individual in the name of a loved one and bestowed upon a sales legacy scholar who best emulates the values of that honored person. In this inaugural year, three Sankofa Memorial Awards were established to the the following individuals. A 2021 Sankofa Memorial Award honoring Deacon John and Sister Ernia Bosley has been presented to Rosa Sales Legacy Scholar, Reverend Yvette Cherie Mayo. A Sankofa Memorial Award honoring Mother Rosa Lee Tig Hudson presented, was presented to the Michael Sales Legacy Scholar, Josiah Johnson. And finally, a Sankofa Memorial Award honoring Pastor Geneva Brazier presented to Rosa Sales Legacy Scholar Christopher Michael Shepherd. Think about those who encouraged you to press forward when you were having difficulties along your way. That's what the families and organizations did who selected to provide a Sankofa Memorial Award in the name of their loved one. This award not only helps to support students and seminarians on their journey to a new level of success, it also provides a way to extend the legacy of your loved one to another generation who can follow in their footsteps. We invite you to consider establishing a Sankofa Memorial in honor of someone who made a difference in your life. And thank you so much, Sister Griffin. We will certainly be praying for these scholars and seminarians, current high school seniors and their families, as well as seminarians should follow the Ezra Project on Facebook or visit the Ezra website at www.theezraproject.com to keep abreast of future application deadlines and other opportunities. And Frank, the Ezra Project is a 501c3 organization and your tax de deductible donation, let me say that one more time, your tax deductible donation will help this project to bless even more seniors and youth to help more churches and individuals address human trafficking and create resources and programs to increase their ministry to the community. And if you would like to support the Ezra Project, the Sales Legacy Program, or honor a loved one with a Sankofa Memorial donation, please visit the Ezra Project, www.theezraproject.com to make a safe, 
and secure online donation. Let me say that one more time, to make a safe and secure donation online. Text to give any amount or mail a check made payable to the Ezra Project, that's E-Z-R-A, to P.O. Box 438825, and that's Chicago 60643. Details are on the website and there is an Amazon store for you about the Ezra Project wonderful items. You know, Frank, it's time to present the four national awards to services to service to the greater Christian community and the world. You thought, I know, you know, I thought it interesting that the two Ella May Davis awardees were pastors. Yes. Who both thought they wanted to play football. <laughs> right. But were sent in another direction by God. Well, Pam, if you thought that that was something, the <laughs> two president awards for denominational support mm -hmm. are being given to women whose ministry journeys are very similar and in the same denomination. Look at God. The president's award for denominational support is given to individuals who have worked at national and international levels with their denominations, thus impacting hundreds of churches and individuals for the cause of Christ. This year, this year, everybody, we are presenting this award to two outstanding national Christian education leaders. Well, the first president's award for denominational support is presented to, mm. drum roll, yes. Dr. Lily Ooh. White Schaefer, Lilydale First Baptist Church, Reverend Alvin Love Pastor. Dr. Lily, M. White Schaefer grew up in Lake Village, Arkansas, but made Chicago her home. Dr. Schaefer is an extraordinary educator. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Education, a Master of Arts in Education in English, and a Doctorate in Education. Wow, wow, wow. And her career in public education has spanned 32 years and included assignments in Skinner Elementary School and Bogan High School as well as the principalship of Oglesby Elementary School from 1974 to 1992, wow. leaving a legacy of excellence, equity, and mentorship. And that's not all. Dr. Schaefer has a certificate in biblical studies from Moody Bible Institute and a diploma in Christian education from the Sunday School Publishing Board of the National Baptist Convention, USA. In her denomination, Dr. Schaefer served as Dean of the Baptist General State Congress of the Christian Education from 1992 to 1997. She served as the Illinois State Director of Christian Education until 2008. And all of that, all of that, Frank, of that. at the same time, she served as the Midwest Regional Director in the Department of Christian Education with the Sunday School Publishing Board for 13 years. Well, that's not all. That's There's not so all. much more. She was president of the Greater New Era Baptist District Association of Chicago and vicinity from 1992 to 2000. And since 1999, 1999, mm. 1999, has been the supervisor of instructor certification mm. for the National Baptist Congress of Christian Education. Wow. As a faculty member and dean of the Chicago Baptist Institute, mm -hmm. Dr. Schaefer trained individuals across the city mm. and region for 14 years. Mm. She also has numerous awards for her Christian education and conference work here in the United States, as well as in Israel, West Africa. France, Italy, Great Britain, Switzerland, Holland, Germany, and both the American and British Virgin Islands. And that's not all, Dr. <laughs> Lily White Schaefer serves her congregation at Lilydale First Baptist Church as Dean, Sunday School teacher, Dorcas Circle member, and an instructor for the Golden Ager Bible study. She loves God and is determined to ensure God's word made plain. Because as Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. 
Dr. Schaefer is the widow of the late Warren G. Schaefer Sr. and the mother of her late son, John. She is blessed to be the grandmother of five, the great grandmother of eight, and the spiritual mother of not just hundreds, but thousands. Dr. Lily White Schaefer. Dr. Schaefer, it is an honor to be able to award you today, to recognize the work that you've done, not only in the schools that you work in, but especially in Oglesby. I've been there. I felt the spirit in that place and seen the legacy that you left. And because I'm a Christian educator, I know the work that you've done for God's people, both in your church and in your denomination. And we thank you. The Ezra Project started by honoring Christian educators. And so because we honor Christian educators, we want to give you first off an award for that. And so this is the official medallion for the Torchbearers Award. And it is it's the Gerald R. Knuckles Award for Christian Education presented to Dr. Millie White Schaefer. And along with that, and along with that, we also have this certificate for you to thank you for your work in Christian education in your local church and throughout your state. But we also want to thank you for your denominational work. Let me hold this. We want to thank you for your denominational work. And so we present you with this award the 2021 President's Award for Denominational and Community Service presented to Dr. Lynn White Schaefer in recognition of Christian faith and ministry by the Ezra Project. We thank you. And we have two more things for you. Number one, we got a little bag around here with the little things with your name on it just because we just think you're sweet and you want to have a little something. Okay, so we, this, is, this is your little goodie bag. So you can, you can play with that when you get home with all your goodie bag in it. But we have also one more thing, and we started this this year. We wanted to thank those torchbearers for doing, we used to have a lunch, and COVID stopped the lunch. But we want to thank the torchbearers, and so we want to thank you. So please accept these small tokens of our appreciation and this love gift as our attempt to thank you for being special <coughs> to us and a blessing to the community. Amen, amen. So we thank you. To my pastor, Reverend Dr. Alvin Love, First Lady, Mrs. Carolyn Love, my grandchildren, my John Ella Burden, and my great grandchildren are probably on their way, late as usual. <laughs> my stepdaughter, a Bernice Pomley, and stepson and his wife, my goddaughter, and armor bearer. Mrs. Constance Carroll, and all of my friends and loved ones who are here with me today for this auspicious occasion. Special acknowledgments to President Dr. Rosa M. Sales, Board of Trustees, Reverend Alice Kennard, Chairman, Mr. Leonard Cooper, Reverend Al Cal Carolyn Butler, Dr. Freddie Hill, Mrs. Cynthia Mosley, Secretary, Trustee, and Stephanie Smith, Treasurer. I accept this most prestigious award with indescribable pride, with overwhelming joy, Christian love, and unexplainable thanksgiving. Just a thought from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. Paul had established the church at Corinth a bustling, trading, prosperous, yet worldly city during his second missionary journey. The purpose for writing this letter to the church was to identify problems and to teach believers how to live for Christ in a corrupt society. We need that lesson today as much as if not more than the Caribbean Christians needed it over 2,000 years ago. We're indeed living in perilous times. There's trouble and conflict from the White House to the State House to the Courthouse to the School House to the Church House 
to your house yeah. and to my house. Harder yet may be the fight. Right may often yield to mine. Wickedness for a time may reign, and Satan's power may seem to gain. But there's a God who loves, who rules above, with a hand of power and a heart of love. And if I'm right, he'll fight my battle, and I will have peace someday. I do not know how long it will be or what the future holds for me. But this I know. If Jesus leads me, I shall get home someday. Again, I accept this prestigious award with undescribable pride, overwhelming joy, Christian love, and unexplainable thanksgiving. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. For those of you who didn't know God, the sermon just got preached. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At this point, we are taking up an offering. Pass the plate. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. So, so uh, uh, Frank, I've got to come off script for a moment, okay? That well, Dr. Sales, that really was the sermon. Yes, it was. <laughs> and yes, I believe was. that peach outfit and the peach folder and the peach hat, she might have had on peach shoes. I'm what sure you think? she did. Yes, <laughs> oh, she my did. God. Yes. Dr. Schaefer. Undescribable. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wow. Unexplainable okay. thankfulness. That's right. Yeah. Overwhelming <laughs> joy yes. and Christian love. All right. All right. I'm coming back to the script. Our final recipient of the 2021 President's Award for denominational support is Dr. Carolyn Walker. All right. Dr. Walker from Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Reginald Sharp, pastor. Dr. Carolyn Walker was raised in the church and accepted Christ as her savior at seven years old. Although she was raised in a family of eight children, all of her siblings except one sister have gone to be with the Lord. Carolyn, however, is blessed with the love of her son, Alan R. Bruce Jr., and over 20 nieces, nephews, and grandnieces, and nephews. And Dr. Carolyn is a gifted writer, speaker, and a Bible student. Dr. Carolyn Walker has degrees in biblical studies, interpersonal and group communication, Christian education, and a doctorate of ministries in church administration in fellowship. Missionary Baptist Church in Chicago, Dr. Walker faithfully served under the late Reverend Dr. Clay Evans and her Karen pastor, Reverend Reginald W. Sharp Jr. in several areas, including being a choir member, an associate minister, the Dean of Christian Education and a Christian Education and Bible instructor. Dr. Walker is also a trainer Congress and Convention Liaison and Ambassador Hospital, say that word for me. Hospitality. Oh my God, member and a prayer intercessor. And in her denomination, the Baptist General State Convention of Illinois, Dr. Carolyn Walker is Dean and State Director of Christian Education with the roster of 17 district associations in over 250 churches. She is also on the executive council of the Sunday School Publishing Board in Nashville, Tennessee, and a writer for the Christian Education Informer magazine. Always engaged in ministry work, Dr. Walker designs and implements specialized Christian education curricula and serves as administrator and teacher on the district, state, and national levels. In addition to being a sought after speaker, facilitator, and workshop leader, she teaches in numerous leadership schools and workshops across the country. And Dr. Walker's work locally and nationally has been recognized with numerous awards, too many to give you names today. Among them, however, is the President's Volunteer Service Award from President Barack Obama, as well as her selection as the National State Director of the Year an award presented to her by the Sunday School Publishing Board. This is wonderful. Yes. 
Dr. Walker. Dr. Carolyn Walker, it is indeed an honor as the president of the Ezra Project to give you this award today. Many times, we, we all know people who are involved in Christian education in their churches, but when you extend beyond your church and when you do training beyond your, your church and the churches near you into your denomination and across the country, you are truly doing the work for the Lord. So thank you so much for the work that you've given, for all that you've done, for the blessing you've been to so many, for the influence you've had on so many people, and for the wisdom and the grace and the love that you bring to teaching God's Word. Amen. And so it is my pleasure to give you the 2021 President's Award for Denominational and Community Support presented to Dr. Carolyn Walker in recognition of Christian faith and ministry leadership presented by the Ezra Project. Oh, God bless you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so, so much. It's, I'm just humbled. I am humbled uh, when I think of uh, how I started in Christian education and uh, when I think how my parents introduced me to the Lord. And uh, my, my father was a pastor of a church, uh, Reverend Charles Walker. And of course, we were in church all the time. And uh, my siblings and I would joke about, you know, when we got grown, we were, uh, we had enough church and we thought, you know, that God would just kind of tally up all the times we were in church <laughs> so we wouldn't have to go anymore. And, uh, but that didn't work. And so uh, my parents led me to the Lord and in Christian education, my mom and dad were involved in all of the conventions and, and so I ended up there as well uh, with my church, Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church under Dr., uh, the late Dr. Clay Evans and now my pastor, uh, Reverend Reginald Wayne Sharp, Jr. Um, my district association, Greater New York District, uh, my state, Baptist General State <laughs> Convention, the Sunday School Publishing <laughs> Board. I praise God for this award and I give it to him. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, uh, Dr. Rosa mm -hmm. and the Ezra Project. Thank you so, so much. And to God be the glory. Amen. 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 God bless you. Blessings bless to you. you. Blessings. Blessings to you. Now, I also have for you, which I forgot to say first, we have here a little goodie bag for oh, you. Oh, wow. With a few little items that we picked out. Put your name on them and so you can't, you can't lose them when you go start going back traveling to conventions oh, again. Oh, wow. So, God bless you. Thank and you. thank you so much. Thank you okay. and blessings to you and to your... The great work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We wanted also to, in some small way, acknowledge the work that you do and just bless you for whatever we could. Mm -hmm. And so please accept these small tokens of appreciation and this love gift as our attempt to thank you for being special to us and a blessing to our community of faith. Mm -hmm. Your legacy, faith, and work, and hope are inspirational. Oh, and thank so, you so much. God bless you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. God thank you. you. This will help to keep the ministry going. Yes. Yes. Thank Amen. you so much. God bless thank you. you. Okay. Blessings to you. Okay. All right. So beautiful. What an amazing presentation and just the honor that is being bestowed upon all of these Legacy Award recipients. But for the first time, the Ezra Project is presenting this year a humanitarian service award. It was the decision of the board that this award be given to someone who is making a difference in either, either civil rights, social justice, or economic equity. We are pleased that the first ever recipient of this award is Mr. Andrew Holmes. Here to tell you more is Ezra board member, Reverend Carolyn Butler. You recognize Andrew Holmes because you see him on Chicago news stations wearing a hoodie and talking to reporters as he stands with families whose loved ones have been killed by senseless violence. 
We are so pleased today to announce that Andrew Holmes is a 2021 torchbearer. While he is noted with his fellow recipients today, this first ever humanitarian award will be presented in a special edition of SHIFT, the monthly talk show sponsored by the Ezra Project on Zoom and Facebook Live. The Ezra Board believes it is important for community members to engage in conversation with Mr. Holmes about his work and how each of us can be more involved in helping him to stem the violence. We invite you to join the Ezra Project and Mr. Andrew Holmes next week, November the 18th at 7 p.m. Central Time for an hour of conversation with Andrew Holmes because he is in the truest sense, a humanitarian and a champion for peace. Mr. Holmes, the Ezra Project overwhelmingly wanted you to receive an award this year. The work that you do in our community with families that are distressed by the violence and with the community in distress is absolutely amazing. No matter what, you're always there. We know that they find you on, we see you on the news, but we know that the mayors and the other people know that you're there and how to call you. And the comfort that you give to families is amazing. So not only your work here in Dalton, your work in addressing the violence that's plaguing our communities, and your work within the community at large is a blessing to us all. And so it is with great honor that I present you this award, the President's Award for Humanitarian Service presented to Andrew Holmes, Mr. Andrew Holmes, in recognition of outstanding activism in the pursuit of justice for the African American community. The Ezra Project is proud to give you this award today. Thank you. Okay, and we have one more thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we wanted to do something a little special. It's a little thing but we wanted to do something else for you. And so I'd like to read you what it says. It says, please accept these small tokens of appreciation and this love gift as our attempt to thank you for being special to us and a blessing to our community of faith. And so we thank you for all that you do and for just the way you stand in the gap. God bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome to well, say something. Yeah, I just want to uh, thank you all. You know, I know you all are a praying family, but I'm going to accept this. Jesus. Amen. Award on behalf of the uh, children who have lost their lives to the senseless gun violence, to those who can't speak right now. So I would stand this up in the front in honor of those who have gone before us. Uh, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 15-year-olds, those who haven't even reached 21. I accept this in honor of those who cannot speak. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. So special. Very, very special. And Frank? Yes. Our final award the Arthur M. Brazier Award for Church and Community Advancement is given to a person whose life, ministry, and work has taken the gospel beyond the church walls. The 2021 Arthur Brazier Award for Church and Community Advancement goes to our own and Chicago's own Mr. Tyrone Studemeyer of Hyatt. Today, the company headquartered in Chicago employs more than 95,000 people with nearly 600 Hyatt branded properties in 50 countries. A big part of Hyatt's future success rests in the hands of Tyrone Studemeyer, 
Vice President of Global Diversity and Inclusion. Joining the hotel chain in September of 2014, Tyrone has already made great strides during his tenure, creating an environment of inclusion that capitalizes on the diversity of Hyatt employees, making sure everyone from the top down knows the value of new ideas, solutions, and talent to meet the demands of the company's diverse customer base. Tyrone walks the walk and talks the talk, sharing and proving his belief that a diverse organization has a big advantage in the marketplace. His Hyatt team and internal corporate stakeholders are initiating diversity in action, creating resource groups and mentoring programs for high potential women and people of color. There's a communications and public relations strategy to drive internal engagement and external brand recognition, plus enhanced brand marketing to further focus on multicultural and LGBT audiences. What Tyrone brings to Hyatt is nothing short of spectacular. His journey started in 1997 at Aon Hewitt, with a stop at Mercer before landing his current position at Hyatt. His outstanding work has been recognized by many of the country's top organizations. He's the recipient of the Leadership Appreciation Award, presented by the National Association of African American Human Resource Executives and the Loretto Hospital Foundation Spirit of Achievement Award. Also, Black Enterprise Magazine named Tyrone one of the top 50 black executives. And it doesn't stop there. This visionary sits on a number of advisory boards and councils, including 100 Black Men of Chicago, American Heart Association's Diversity Council, and the Hispanic Alliance for Career Enhancement. Tyrone understands the power behind his position, and he's using his experience and leadership to make a difference. And I don't take this appointment just an, another job. I take an opportunity to make the world a better place to work for everyone provide opportunities through the Hyatt Hotels to be able to help people globally. Fostering relationships with other Fortune 100 companies and showing that diversity should be spread across the board is another goal for Tyrone. I think that everyone needs truth tellers in their lives. Tyrone is someone that I find to be um, elegant about the truth, but not willing to have the truth be squashed. You know, he's going to make sure the truth is told. And when that comes to holding people accountable, he does it in such a way where the evidence is so clear, the facts are so clear, it's inarguable. It's also clear that Tyrone Studemeyer's dedication to diversity and inclusion is matched only by his unique abilities to achieve it. Hi at Hotel. Tyrone Studemeyer's life is indeed exciting and glamorous now, but we want you to know that it has been an intervention by God at every step. Tyrone was born in Detroit, Michigan. His parents migrated from Alabama and raised the family just blocks away from Motown. In 1970, the family moved to the suburbs of Detroit, becoming the first black family to live in the all white community. This move afforded a good environment for raising a family but tragedy lurked at almost every turn. As the only black child in the school and in his classroom, the other children mistook Tyrone for a person of Indian heritage and often yelled at him to go back to Africa, to India, I'm sorry. While he was in junior high, Tyrone was hit by a car in a racially motivated attack. The accident left him in a body cast and caused him to be homeschooled for seventh and eighth grades. He was not expected to ever walk again. Tragically, his oldest brother was murdered, his younger sister died at birth, and both of his parents passed away before Tyrone reached 21 years old. Praised, raised primarily in the Church of God in Christ and encouraged by his grandmother's belief that one must always find a church for watch care wherever you live, Tyrone moved to Chicago at age 24. After finding housing outside the city, Tyrone set out to find a Church of God in Christ church that he knew. However, he got lost and he found himself at the Apostolic Church of God, seated next to the pastor's wife, Sister Isabel Brazier. There he met countless people, including Bishop Arthur Brazier, who would become his adopted family. Through it all, Tyrone Studemeyer's life has been guided by the Lord. God has ushered him into situations, relationships, and positions where his conviction to live the gospel of the Lord has been shown through his integrity and it has given him the opportunity that few could expect. 
Today, Tyrone and his wife, Valerie, have one daughter and are engaged in community programs and in the work of the church. The Global Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Hyatt Hotels, Tyrone is a nationally recognized executive. And in fact, his life and work are featured in the latest issue of Inclusion Magazine. His life experiences and unique talent create extraordinary strategic networking opportunities for the benefits of individuals and organizations. But all of this bears witness to his faith and to the hand of God in his life. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2021 Arthur Embrasier Award recipient, Mr. Tyrone Studemeyer. Tyrone Studemeyer, I've known you for a long time. And I've watched you as you walked by Bishop Brazier, as you did what he needed done, sometimes before he knew he needed it done. I thank you for the service you rendered, not only to him, but to the church and that you rendered to the community. When we thought about this award this year, we thought about you because if there's one person who in the congregation best exemplifies Bishop Brazier, it's you. The Arthur Brazier Award was created because Bishop went beyond the walls and around the world. And so each person who receives the Arthur Brazier Award is someone who has taken their Christian faith and therefore shaped their careers and gone into the world to carry not just the business, but to carry the gospel message. And so we would like to present to you the 2021 Arthur Brazier Award for Church and Community Advancement presented to Mr. Tyrone Studemeyer in recognition of outstanding leadership in the cause of equity, diversity, and justice worldwide wow. from the Ezra Project. Oh so my we gosh. thank you for your service. We also have a little bag with a couple of little things in it with your name on it so y'all can share. Um, so we, we just want to give you a little something to remember us by. And we have one other thing. And this is a, a gift that we're giving you. We just want to say, uh, please accept these small tokens of appreciation and this love gift is our attempt to thank you for being special to us and a blessing to our community. So God bless you. Oh, sister, sister sales. This Amen. is, God oh, can I hug you? you. Mm. God bless this you. is quite the honor and thank privilege you. to you receive this, this um, prestigious award. I'm really kind of overwhelmed. Um, to know Bishop is to love him, but to walk alongside him is to learn. And I've learned to be a better man, a better husband, a better father, but most of all, a better servant of the Lord, because Bishop taught us to serve yeah. and to give back. And Bishop said, too much is given, much is required. And so I have been able to do much for my church, my community, but in yeah. corporate America, where we struggle the most. Right. Representation is low of blacks and women in senior level roles and be able to stand in the gap and help to fight the injustice of our people has been an honor and a privilege, but I couldn't have done any of it if it had not been for the love and affection and teaching and tools that Bishop has given me down through the years. And I wouldn't be successful if it hadn't been for my wife and my daughter who stand beside me as I do this great work. Amen. So thank you for your leadership. And thank you, you for thinking enough of me to honor me with such this, this such wonderful award of Bishop. God bless you. God bless God you bless and keep you. you. Thank ah, you. Thank oh, you. Rosa, this is beautiful. Amen. And yes, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. And you know, Frank, I really enjoyed this virtual ceremony today, and it's just another incredible special event with all of the recipients and and uh, let me use this word unexplainable thankfulness <laughs> and overjoyed yes. with yes. this and overwhelming love and Christian love and and Dr. Rosa sells yes. in this board. Yes. It's just been absolutely fabulous. It is and Pam perfect. and Frank, Pam and Frank, let's not forget. Tyrone has done some wonderful things, but as the Arthur Brazier Award recipient, we huh. want to hear his final words to us before oh. we leave this program. There's and so more. we're going to go again to Tyrone Studemeyer in person via Zoom to speak to all of us. So thank you. And Tyrone, thank you. I knew it was more. <laughs> My God, uh, Rosa Sells, God bless you and may he keep you. We thank you, your board and your entire staff for this wonderful program. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge and congratulate and salute all the award winnies, winners today for their contribution to mankind. As we continue to work to make the world a better place to live for all, the work of others have been mightiful. We've been able to help individuals who didn't have a voice, who didn't have a home, who didn't have shelter or food. We've been able to give back to those, the work that God has called us to do. 
I'm humbled, I'm honored and a bit overwhelmed and rejoicing in this program for the great work that man have done towards mankind. Bishop Brazier was a phenomenal leader, a phenomenal man, a teacher, a pastor, but most of all a friend and ultimately a surrogate father to me is because of his love, his affection, his teaching, his, his, his endurance of, of dealing with me as a, as, as, as a, as a, as a, as a teenager and a, and a young adult uh, to tutelage me and teach me the way to lead, to follow, to listen. As humans, we hear, but as Christians, we must listen attentively to hear what the, uh, the God's people need. And he's instilled that in me and I'm grateful and thankful. I thank all of you today for your contributions. We actually continue to support one another, reach out and help one another, reach out and pray for one another, stand in the gap for each other as we continue on this journey as we uh, to, to being Christians in this nation. Thank you, Rosa Sales. Thank you, Pam. Uh, for your and Frank for your 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 moderation today your, and everyone that was on this call we may God bless you may God keep you in Jesus name Amen. Wow. Amen and thank you so much, Brother Tyrone. I we, love uh, him. Are, we are so <laughs> grateful to God for you and what He's yet doing in your life and yeah. what a great way to kind of wrap this up on this afternoon. Yeah. But before we wrap this up, uh -huh. we want you to remember that mm -hmm. you can support the Ezra Project. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a 501c3 organization and the mm -hmm. Ezra project.com go to the website www.theezraproject.com you can also text to give your best amount to mm -hmm. 84321 and then on Amazon you're shopping for the holidays be sure to include the Ezra project as your uh, group for that contribution because a portion of those Things that you buy on Amazon can go directly to the Ezra Project. That's the Amazon Smile uh, set, site website that will help you to get there. So, and don't forget, you can also mail your checks too to uh, the Ezra Project as well. And, you know, this has been a great, great afternoon. And we say congratulations to the founder, to the president. Absolutely. We give it to you, Dr. Rosa Sells, and every, again, every recipient. Wow. That's what I can say. Wow. Again, unexplainable thankfulness and overwhelming joy and love. Dr. Yes, Rosa, Rosa Sells. Sells. Yes. We now turn it over to for final remarks. And I want us uh, virtually wherever you are, let's put our hands together. We, we Let's make a little bit of noise virtually, however you can do it, as we celebrate now the president and CEO of this wonderful group who has brought us together in this virtual awards recognition today, Dr. Rosa M. Sales. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pam and Frank. You guys are wonderful. We thank you for once again doing this. My congratulations to all of the honorees today. As I read over their um, uh, lives, it was amazing to me what these people have done, what God has done for the world through them. So I thank them. I thank everyone on the board who was on today uh, to help make this presentation. And thank you to those of you who are listening. Thank you for your comments in the chat and your encouragement as we've gone along. Thanks for those of you who were in the audience at houses and in front of churches. Uh, we couldn't put everything in here. It's been a long program, but we still couldn't put it all in here. So pay attention to the Ezra website because all of the outtakes, all of the comments, all of the laughter and the fun will be on our Facebook page. So make sure you tune in to that. I pray that today's program has been a blessing and encouragement to you as we've celebrated these heroes of faith. And I ask you, as we go into this holiday season, please celebrate the heroes of faith in your families, in your churches, and in your communities. Tell the next generation about their legacies and the joys of their lives and what they've shared with you, especially as we go into the holidays. The Sankofa Memorial is our way of sharing the memories of those special individuals who can become that great cloud of witnesses for another generation. So we ask you to please consider a Sankofa Memorial for someone in your life. Anyone can do it and we welcome you to do it. So follow our Facebook page and look on our website, www.theezraproject.com and think about a Sankofa Memorial because there are people in your lives that people don't know about, but who are an encouragement even to a next generation. So please follow us, please like us, please do all those new 
things that people are supposed to do on social media because we're trying to make a difference. And join us in our monthly talk program uh, shift and where we've talked about so many different things we want to share with you in that as well. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you again for being here for today's celebration. Thank you to all of the awardees for allowing us to come into your homes, into your places of worship, into your families and share with you. You are an inspiration to us. Thank you to all. And now we'll be dismissed in prayer by Reverend Joe Marie Cooper, a member of our Ezra team. And we thank you again for joining us today. May we bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, in closing, we would like to thank you for making this 2021 Torchbearers Legacy Awards celebration possible. We thank you for each honoree, their families, Reverend Dr. Rosa Sales, the Ezra Board and Committees, and all those who work so diligently with her in this endeavor. Please bless those today who viewed and joined us in this amazing program. You are an awesome God, and we are grateful for your presence and all you do for us. Bless and keep us, O oh God, we pray. May we be faithful to our call. In Jesus' name, amen.